Torres Strait Islanders know better than most Australians the impact of human-induced climate change, such as rising sea levels. The science is there. You know, you've got to believe the facts and you've got to do something, something to help us. While they await the outcome of their claim with the UN, accusing the Australian government of failing their human rights by not adequately addressing climate change, news of today's watershed IPCC report is reaching these remote islands. We welcome the report. It's um, very welcoming to see that the, the science um, to back up our case and our story. Get to the back of the house. The panel's previous report eight years ago set the framework for the 1.5 to 2 degree warming limit set out in the Paris Agreement, which Australia signed up to. But the latest report includes research showing Australia has already warmed 1.44 degrees since 1910, and in the east, warming nearly four times faster than the global average. More recently, there's been extreme weather events such as the Black Summer bushfires, wildfires in North America, Russia, Greece and Turkey. There is something so fundamental that also cannot be denied, and that is climate change. And floods in China and in Europe, which have seen meteorological records shatter. Now, the first report of the sixth assessment by some 234 leading climate scientists is in. It's not new research, rather the most comprehensive review of more than 14,000 research papers on the physical science of climate change, providing a foundation for government and industry to respond to the threat. Dr Pep Cannadell is the CSIRO's chief research scientist and a coordinating lead author of this report. I think that the IPCC were coming much stronger, you know, bolder and more confident than ever before in stating that human activities and specifically the emissions of greenhouse gases are the cause of the warming that we have observed. Escape from warming now is no longer possible. We have now observed and there's data that every single uh, continent, every single region, every single ocean has warmed. The report says the window for action is closing. Our assessment shows that um, bringing carbon dioxide emissions uh, around what we call net zero emissions by around 2050 and bringing all the other green, greenhouse gases down, it's uh, still within the more than 50% probability that we can uh, stabilize the climate. The IPCC sixth assessment is a, is a mammoth undertaking and it's a, a massive international uh, effort. It's on par with the Olympics. CSIRO climate projections scientist Dr Michael Gross says climate change modelling has improved. All models need to be really carefully assessed and used appropriately. That's always been the case. Uh, and the new IPCC assessment report really does that uh, very thoughtfully and very carefully. If you double the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's a, it's a measure of how sensitive the Earth is to the enhanced greenhouse effect that we are adding to through our greenhouse gas emissions. If it's somewhere in the area of two and a half to four degrees uh, Celsius for a doubling of CO2, uh, and that's a new value from the new assessment, uh, which represents our best understanding based on the cutting edge science. The IPCC finds Earth's global surface temperature is 0.27 degrees warmer than in the previous IPCC report in 2013. 0.08 of the increase is due to data improvements. There's now clear evidence that uh, events such as the conditions that set up the black summer of 2019-20 in Australia were made more severe or more likely because of climate change. And there's examples of that around the world now. So the report makes very clear that no matter what we do over the coming decades, uh, global warming will proceed.
The pointy end of this assessment is the summary to policymakers, like our own in government, heading to Glasgow for COP21 in November. That summary says that global warming of 1.5 to 2 degrees will be exceeded during the 21st century, unless deep reductions in CO2 occur in the coming decades. Deep reductions to which not all countries have yet committed. Australia has no formal net zero target and has not moved from its 2030 emissions reduction target of 26 to 28 per cent. Meanwhile, the US, Canada and New Zealand have pledged to go net zero by mid-century and cut emissions more ambitiously before then. The Climate Change Performance Index ranked Australia 54th out of 61 countries and the UN Sustainable Development Report scored Australia last out of 193 countries on climate policy and projections. I mean, we are seeing change, humans are playing a role uh, and we need to act and that's why we are acting and, and most importantly we need to act at the global level. This is a global problem, requires a global solution. We need to make net zero practically achievable for all countries, particularly developing countries and we need it to be achievable whilst maintaining strong economies. We know that is the way through this, and that's why we think technology is the key. We will put an updated set of projections out later this year, as we do every year, on how we're performing versus that 2030 target. As to how we mitigate climate change is a subject of a future report. Dr Pep Canadell says there is room for optimism if action is taken swiftly. It's important to understand that yet there is, we haven't crossed any thresholds you know, for us to kind of not to be able to stabilize the temperature at 1.5, well below 2 degrees. We have actually crossed a number of thresholds in the climate system, which basically means that after we stabilize the climate, you know, changes will continue for hundreds if not thousands of years. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.